Okay, so here, uh, this is the outline. So uh, first, we, I will uh, mention the uh, Maxwell equations in free space. And according to this condition, we can actually derive the wave equation in free space. And also, uh, we will try to solve it. And then, yeah, we will get the EM wave as the solution to the wave equation. So, um, in the last chapter, we know that uh, in the last chapter, we know that uh, the Maxwell equation is like this. Uh, of course, uh, for the Gauss law, we should have the um, uh, charge density on the right side, and also for the Ampere's law, we also have the have the um, current density on the right side. But here. Uh, we have this uh, assumption to be the free space. Uh, free space. Uh, in Chinese, it is called zhiyou uh, kongjian, which means uh, we don't have charge or current in this space. And in in this case, um, the EM wave can be propagated in the space freely. It doesn't uh, change by other things. It shows the, the characteristic by uh, according to itself. So we call this free space. You can simply regard the free space as just a vacuum uh, without a, a magnetic characteristic, without electricity characteristic, or without any dipoles, uh, or any di dielectrics, something like that. Uh, so this is called free space, which means that uh, in mathematical equation, we can write it as the rho is zero for all the spaces. And also the charge, uh, the current density are all zero over the whole space. So this is uh, called a free space assumption. And yeah, in the exam, probably I, I think I will ask you to uh, derive the the, the, the wave equation uh, without this assumption. Of course, the wave equation is difficult to solve in, in that sense, but I will not uh, uh, require you to, to solve it anyway. Okay, so with the free space assumption, the Maxwell equation will be simplified as follows. So for the two Gauss law, we just have the divergence of the E field and B field on the left side and the, on the right side they are all zero with the free space assumption. And for the Faraday's law there is nothing changed because it is originally like this. And for the Ampere's law originally we have mu naught j on the right side. So now if we assume j to be zero, so we assume j to be zero here, we assume rho to be zero here so that these two conditions are the free space condition. So the Maxwell equation are simplified to be this uh, form. And in order to uh, derive, in order to derive the uh, the wave equation, definitely we need this uh, identity called the curl of curl identity. You know uh, this uh, upside down triangle with the cross product. We call this one the curl. So this curl operator can operate on the vector field. So after acting on the vector field, it is still a vector field. So we can put another curl operator to to this vector field. So we call this curl of curl for the for the vector field. And it will satisfy this uh, identity. On the right side, it is divergence. So this is divergence. This is gradient. If you still remember, oh, this is still this is gradient. This is divergence. So the divergence to a vector field will become a scalar field, and you can use the gradient operator on act on the uh, scalar field so that it turns back to a vector field because this side is a vector field, this side should also be a vector field. So 
after this operation or composite operation, it is still a uh, uh, vector view. And for this one, it is a little bit uh, different. This one is called the Laplacian. 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 So Laplacian, you can regard it as the, grad, uh, the gradient operator dotted with the gradient operator. Something like this. Something like this. And you can simply imagine that uh, for the gradient operator in the Cartesian coordinate, it is nothing but uh, sorry, rho uh, partial partial x uh, i plus a partial partial y j plus partial partial z k. If you still remember the gradient operator, uh, this is the gradient operator. This is the uh, gradient operator. So now we have the Laplacian to be defined as uh, the gradient operator uh, gradient operator dotted uh, dotted with another gradient operator. So it will be something like this partial partial xi plus a partial partial yj plus a partial partial zk dotted with partial partial x I plus partial partial y j plus partial partial z k something like this yeah so you can see here i dot i will be one i dot j i dot k will be zero so we only have uh, partial partial square partial x square so the second derivative second partial derivative of x plus a uh, second partial derivative of y plus partial second derivative of a z, something like this. So this is the uh, Laplacian. This is the Laplacian in Cartesian domain. So this is the Laplacian in, uh, in Cartesian. Cartesian coordinate. Cartesian in uh, Cartesian coordinate. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. yeah, so we have the Laplacian. So this Laplacian can be operated to the uh to the uh vector field. So if we just act it on the vector field, it is nothing but a partial pass. So uh Laplacian of F will be nothing but this plus a partial square f partial square y partial f square partial z square so this is a vector field we can just take the uh, partial derivative a uh, second partial derivative with respect to x with respect to y with respect to z and then add them together so this is still a vector field this is still a vector field so yeah, and actually you can use the uh, original operation to show that or oh, in Cartesian coordinate this identity is true. If you are if you are interested, you can try it yourself. Okay, so actually here we only need to make use of this identity. If you believe in it, you can directly use it. Okay, so here we have this a uh, curl of curl identity. And here we have uh, this one is the Faraday's law. This one is the uh, Ampere's law in free space, so that we don't have the J here. So you can also regard it as the Maxwell's law in the textbook. But yeah, in the textbook, it doesn't really mention the um, the differential form. And here, this is the Gauss law in free space. Gauss law in free space. So here. Hmm. So we use this uh, curl of curl identity and uh, exchange f by e, so that we have the e field and take the curl of curl. And yeah, so or here, 
actually we make use of this equation and then take the curl on both sides. Take the curl on both sides. So on the left side, we have the curl of curl of uh, E, E view. We have something like this. And then also on the right side, we take the curl. So it will be like uh, minus curl of uh, partial B partial T. And yeah, we assume that this curl can and this uh, partial derivative with respect to time can be exchanged. The order, the order can be exchanged, so that we move this curl inside. So we have partial pass minus partial partial t curl of b. So we just uh, move this one inside the partial derivative. We have something like this. Now we have this curl of b. So we can make use of the Ampere's law because we have curl of B here. So then we can just plug in this term into here. Yeah. So also we can make use of the curl of curl identity because uh, this is a curl of curl. So we could have a gradient of the divergence of uh, E. So we have gradient of uh, divergence of E minus the Laplacian of E, something like this, something like this. And then on the right side, we can just substitute this one here. So we have a uh, mu naught epsilon naught here. And also we have partial E partial T and then plug it here. We have another partial partial T so that we have the second uh, partial derivative with respect to time for the e field for the e field okay so next we also make use of the gauss law in free space so this is the gauss law in free space so here we also have the uh, divergence of e so this is nothing but zero so this this is zero so this term is a uh, vanish so because a uh, gradient of zero is still zero. So the only remaining terms is these two, this one and this one. And then we multiply uh, minus one on both sides. So then it turns out to be the Laplacian of E uh, equals mu naught epsilon naught, uh, second partial derivative of E on the right side, something like this. So this is actually the wave equation for the E view. Actually, the uh, wave equation of the of the E field, and then the next step, yeah, we just um, uh, hold up to here, and then we try to derive an other wave equation for the B field. So similarly, we also make use of the curl of curl identity, and here we make use of uh, the uh, Ampere's law in free space. Faraday's law and also the uh, and also the the, the the Gauss law for the magnetism. So now rather than taking the curl for the uh, Faraday's law, we take the curl for this one for the uh, Ampere's law. So we take a uh, curl on both sides for the uh, for the M, uh, for the for the Ampere's law. So we have curl of curl of the B view and then on the right side similarly uh, we take the curl here and then so we have a mu naught epsilon naught here and of course we take the curl for this term and then similarly we can move the curl inside the partial derivative so we have a partial partial t curl of E curl of E okay so yeah, so this is nothing special, and uh, yeah. So now we can apply the curl of curl identity for the left hand side. We just change this f into b, so that this is b, and then we also change f into b, so that we have a gradient of a divergence of b minus the Laplacian of b on the left side, like this, which is uh, this one. And on the right side, on the right side here, we have uh, the curl of E. 
So we can make use of the Faraday's law. We have curl of E on the left side. So we just substitute this term into here. Substitute this term into here. And then here we have a minus sign. So we have minus mu naught epsilon naught. And then we have partial B partial T plugging into here. And then we have another partial partial T. So we have the second derivative, uh, second partial derivative of with respect to time for the B view. This is B, so he, this is B here. And similarly, this one is zero. So this whole time vanish. And likewise, we multiply a uh, negative one on both, uh, on both sides. So that to cancel this uh, negative sign. So on the left side, we have the Laplacian of B view plus uh, equals mu naught epsilon naught uh, second partial derivative of uh, of uh, b with respect to the time, so we have another wave equation for the b view. So when you consider the wave equation for the e view and also the wave equation for the b view, they look actually the same except here we have e e, but here we have b and b here. All the other all the other terms are totally the same. All other operator are all, 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 are all the same. Okay, so when we just try to see uh, what this actually is, so this is something like if you still remember the Laplacian, or maybe I can just go back to here. If you consider what is the Laplacian, if you still remember. It is the second derivative with respect to x plus the second derivative with respect to y plus the second derivative with respect to z. This is the Laplacian in the Cartesian domain, if you still remember. Which means that the Laplacian is something like taking the derivative in the space domain, no matter the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. E is, of course, E is, of course, uh, a vector or a vector field with some argument x, y, z and also t and also t so c is a function with the argument x, y, z, t so you can take uh, take this uh, take the derivative with respect to x, y, z or t so on the, light, on the left hand side we only take the derivative with respect to the space domain. However, on the right side, we take the second derivative with respect to time. And they turns out to be the same. They turns out to be the same. Of course, we have another uh, uh, factor in front of them, which is like uh, mu naught epsilon naught. Yeah, so we have the wave equation for the E view and B view here. And now we denote uh, speed of light C to be this a uh, one over square root of mu naught epsilon naught. So that's why C will be look like that. Uh, it is not coincident to be to be equal to the uh, square root of mu naught epsilon naught. Uh, yes. And actually, it relates to the wave equation. If we have this uh, relationship, so here, this uh, mu naught epsilon naught can be replaced by 1 over c squared because you just uh, take square on both sides. So with c squared equals 1 over mu naught epsilon naught, and then you take the inverse or take the res uh, reciprocal on both sides, you will have uh, mu naught epsilon naught equals to 1 over c squared. So we have a uh, so we have a uh, mu naught epsilon naught equals one over c squared. So you can just uh, replace this term by one over c squared. This term by one over c squared. So that the wave equation for the EM wave will look like this. Of course, in free space, in free space, it's very important. Okay. So actually, we will try to solve this in one dimension, in one dimension. 
as much as um, if we assume uh, if we assume this axis is uh, the same as the propagation direction then we can just uh, simplify it to one dimension which means e is a function of x and t rather than x y z t just now generally you can write it uh, like this uh, e is a function of x y z and t but if you choose the uh, coordinate correctly just say if the line is uh, propagating in this direction so you choose the x axis to be like this then then e is only a function of x and times rather than x y z t yeah so here we only uh, solve this uh, wave equation in one dimension which means like this or likewise we also have uh, we also have the second partial derivative of the b field with respect to x equals 1 over c squared times second derivative of the b field with respect to time so we have both uh, equation so we try to solve it it is not uh, really difficult so let's see here um, this is a type of uh, easy partial differential equation and uh, one of the uh, one of the way to uh, solve the partial uh, partial differential equation so before we we have learned how to solve the constant coefficient ODE ODE means ordinary differential equation which means that the differential equation uh, only have one independent variable and that in that case we call it the ODE here we we have a PDE which means the partial uh, differential equation which means that we have a multiple independent variable in this case we have x and t to be independent variable uh, and this is something like a function of course it is a e view but it is a function of uh, x and t so we need to take the partial derivative rather than the ordinary derivative so separation of uh, separable of variable or separation of variables is a uh, standard step to solve the, the the PDE for any PDE you can try this first it may work it may not work but if it works it will be very simple it will be very simple so we should try to use it and for this uh, equation the separation of variables works so it will work like this so suppose uh, e is a function of x and t and we assume that this function is composite by two parts one part is uh, only related to the x and another part is only related to the t and they are multiplied together to get the whole function that's why we call it separable of variables it's just like uh, this is a function related to x and t but it turns out to be a function of x and a function of t and then they multiply together some function are not separable for example if I have a function f of x y equals x squared plus x y plus y squared then you know you cannot factorize this uh, this uh, polynomial uh, uh, with respect to x and y this is not factorizable which means that not uh, factorize factorizable not factorizable which means that uh, or not not separable not separable but for this case we assume that the function is separable which means that they can be separated into two subfunction and then they multiply to be the whole function okay so this is the first step and we just uh, put it 
back into here and here. So here we have the second parcel derivative of x with respect to this function. So we have an e x x e t t. And then on the right side, we have 1 over c squared, 1 over c squared, and the second parcel derivative with respect to time. And then we plug in e x e t into here and here. OK, so here uh, we try to take the second parcel derivative. But this is a function of x. This is a function of t. Here, we only need to take the partial derivative with respect to x. So this is like a constant to x, which means that this term can be uh, put in the front. So we have e t t here. And then we take the second partial derivative with respect to x. Mm, like this. So we only put this one outside. And likewise for this one, this is a function of x, this is a function of t, and now we only need to take the partial derivative. Oh, of course, the second partial derivative with respect to time, which means that this is a function of x, which is independent to t. So this one can be moved out. So we have 1 over c squared times e x of x times this second partial derivative of e with respect to time, like this. So we. From here to here, we only move this term out and move this term out. So it looks like this and this. OK, so the next step is we try to move this term. Yeah, because this is just multiplication. So that on both sides, we can just divide it by e of e x of x, e t of t. On, uh, we just multiply this vector on both sides or divide the original function on both sides. So that this one moved move over to the left side, this one move over to the right side. Which means that we have still have this term and then divided by e x of x on the left side. And on the right side we have 1 over z square and then this term move over to the right side. So we have et of t. And then still multiply by the second derivative of this term. So now it is uh, very interesting because I intentionally use uh, the blue color to represent the ex and then use a the green color to represent the et. So you can see up to here, we only have ex on the left side and only have et on the right side which means that this is a function of x this is a function of time but they are equal to each other no matter what x or t is which means that if for example if i just fix the t and we try to change different value of x they should still be the same but this size yeah of, uh, at least the x change but this line doesn't change and they still equal to each other which means that even if you change the value of x the whole term doesn't change it's still a constant so it is it should be a constant and likewise if i just fix x and try to vary t this will still be constant because this side doesn't really change and this side the, the t change so this will still be a constant value in, in this sense, we know that if we can separate the variable, so separa of separation of variable has two meanings. The first meaning is that at the very beginning, we try to assume the function is separable. And then we make this assumption, and then we plug it into the original PDE. And after some calculation, we find that these two variables can be actually separable in terms of this. So we move one of the variable on the left side and the other variable on the right side. So this is a, the second meaning for the separable of variable. And in this sense, we can make an argument that this is a constant function, this is another constant function, and they should be equal to each other. Now we just call this constant. So this is a constant. 
we just call it A here. We just call it A here. So now we have uh, we have two independent uh, ODE instead of one PDE because we have this one equal to a constant. This one equal to the same constant which means that we have uh, this one equals to A, this one equals to A. So now we can just uh, multiply E x on both sides so that we have uh, the second derivative of E equals A times E x. And then here we can just uh, move this term to the, left, uh, to the right side so we have a second derivative of, uh, of E with respect to T equals a times c squared times et. So now this is two uh, ODE. Uh, ODE joints, ODE, joint ODEs. So we can, we can be able to solve them easily because we have already know how to solve the ODE with constant coefficient and actually these two are actually constant coefficient ODE. So here, we will try to uh, solve this one, for example, for the x, which means that uh, we can just, uh, for example, for this one, we can just move this one uh, to the left side. Yeah, move this term to the left side, so we have something like this. So e x is the function we would like to find. So the function will look like this. This function, uh, this uh, this uh, this ODE, this ODE will look like this. Just say this one is uh, equation one. So this is one. And you know to solve this one, we can just change the second derivative into s square, and then minus a times e x is the original function, so we replace it by one, so we have s squared minus one equals zero, which means that s squared equals a. Actually, there are three cases. The, th the first case is, is a is a positive value, a is a positive value, and if a is positive, which means that s is a square plus or minus square root of a plus or minus square root of a, which is, uh, which is two positive uh, real values, uh, no, not, not positive real values, which is uh, two distinct, uh, distinct real, real poles, uh, distinct real roots, uh, real roots. Yeah, so actually, if we have s to be plus or minus square root of a, which means that e x should be e, uh, to the square root of a x power and also e to the minus square root of a x power. We have these two uh, as the solution. These two as the solution. And likewise, if we try to solve this one, the second one, we have uh, the second derivative uh, of the et minus a c squared et equals zero. So we have s squared, this is second derivative, and then this is the original function, so we have a c squared. And of course c is positive value, so still here we have s squared equals to a c squared. So if a is positive, if a is positive, we have uh, s equals square root of a times c, something like this, uh, plus or minus. So et is a bit different. We have another factor c here, c here. So ex, et, like this. And of course, uh, generally, we will write it as the linear combination of these two functions. So we will write ex as this function a times exponential to square root of ax plus uh, b times exponential to minus square root of ax. And uh, 
Yeah, and here we have uh, also e t to be the linear combination of these two terms. So it will be c times e to the exponential to square root of a c t plus d times exponential to minus square root of uh, a c t. So like this, but actually this is not good because we don't really like this uh, exponential function. Exponential function is something like, like this. This is exponential function. If if the if the exponent is a negative, it will be something like that. If it if the exponent is a positive, it will be something like that. Which means that this side will goes to infinity, or this side is uh, goes to infinity, which is not good because if the e view goes to infinity, which means that there should be infinite power there. So it is not possible. So we don't like this uh, solution. So we, 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 we discard this solution. So for the second case, similarly, if a is zero, so that dx should be a plus dx, et should be c plus dt. It is still the same if, yeah, this is a linear function. This is a linear function. If b is positive, if b is positive, it is like this. If b is negative, uh, it is like this. So it will still go to infinity for this time or this time, unless b is zero. If b is zero, a is also zero, then there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. It's just a constant e view, and yeah. So it is not interesting. But either way, it will go to infinity. So this is not good either. So we will have the third case and. Yeah, before we move on, we have a 10 minutes break first.